When learning about the abdomen, it's really important to know which organs are normally found in the cavity. However, the abdominal cavity is a really large space, and so as well as knowing which organs are inside it, it's also pretty helpful to know where those organs are. To help us do that, we can break the space down into nine abdominopelvic regions. Now these are regions you can find on a living patient, so I'm going to run through them by drawing them onto this photo, and you can find a link to this image below. First we need to draw the planes that divide up the abdomen. We have two vertical planes that run through the middle of our collarbones, and these are the mid-clavicular lines. Next we have a horizontal line that lies along the inferior border of the ribs, the subcostal plane, and then the final line passes horizontally between the iliac tubercles of the pelvis. Looking anteriorly, this is found at the widest part of the iliac crest, and we call this the transtubercular plane. Now we have our nine regions, we just need to name them. In the centre, the region containing the belly button, or umbilicus, is our umbilical region. Above this is the epigastric region. The word gastric relates to the stomach, epi is Greek for above, and so this is the region over the stomach. At the other end is the hypogastric region. Hypo is Greek for below, so this is literally the region below the stomach. On the other side of this we have the left and right iliac or inguinal regions, and these are named because they're bordered laterally by the ilia of the pelvis and the inguinal canal. Next are the two lumbar regions, named after the vertebral level they're found at, and then finally we have the two hypochondriac regions. We've already seen that hypo is Greek for below, but what about the rest of its name? Well, anything chondral relates to cartilage, and the organs in this area lie partly below the cartilage of the inferior rib cage. As a side note, this is also where we get the term hypochondriac from. In medieval medicine, the belief was that any illness without an obvious cause was related to an overproduction of black bile from the hypochondriac regions. So, those are our nine abdominal regions. And there's a lot of ways you could revise these, but personally, I'd recommend playing from games of abdominal tic-tac-toe. Once you've learnt these regions, you can then use them to identify the positions of the major organs. Let's start with the most superficial organs. The stomach mostly occupies the left hypochondriac region, although distally it passes over towards the epigastric region. On the other side of the abdomen is the liver. The largest internal organ, this fills the right hypochondriac region before passing through the epigastrium and overlying the stomach. Inferiorly, we find the intestines. The large intestine starts from the right iliac region, heads up until it meets the liver at the level of the subcostal plane, and then swings across the path to the other side of the abdomen. It then passes through the lower left regions before finishing at the rectum in the hypogastric region. The small intestines occupy all of this central space, and so are primarily found around the umbilical region. Posteriorly, we find a few organs that are held tightly against the body wall. First we have the kidneys. These are found at the intersections of the midclavicular lines with the subcostal plane. Remember the right kidney will be slightly lower as it gets pushed down by the liver. The ureters travel out from the centres of the kidneys to drain into the bladder. When empty, this fits comfortably inside the hypogastric region, but is capable of expanding all the way to the umbilicus. The pancreas sits in the upper umbilical region, with its tail passing laterally towards the left hypochondriac region. At this point it meets the hilum of my favourite organ, the spleen, and this is tucked up under the left side of the rib cage. So, those are the major regions of the abdomen and their content. Try and keep these in mind if you learn more about the abdomen, and it will hopefully help you to relate that anatomy to living patients. Other than that, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Cheers!